I had this on my mind this morning and I just wanted to come on here and make a quick video. This is for the people that have contacted me recently telling me that my facts of my story was incorrect. Just like I told them, I will say this publicly. When I do a story on a missing person or a murder victim or any other type of story, I gather my information from public resources such as Name Us, Uncovered Code Cases, The Charlie Project, Unsolved Appalachia. Um, there's many, many, many online where I gather as much information from each one of these and there have been a few cases that I've talked about, a few stories that I've done where there was so little information that you just had to take what little bit you could find. Reaching out to family members of these people, the deceased or the missing, I, I, I don't typically do that. If they have a public Facebook page, for example, dedicated to that person and they have information on there with their name, phone number, or an email address, I might reach out to them and ask them for an update or if they would like to share any information. The reason I'm telling this is in the past few months, I've had two family members from two different stories that I've covered uh, reach out to me via my email address and tell me that some of the facts in my story, now these were two separate stories, that some of the facts were wrong. I asked them to send me what information I got wrong and send me the um, update or, you know, the difference of what, of what it was that I got wrong and that I would be more than willing to do a follow-up video correcting that information or saying that according to a family member or according to a source you know here is some more details on the story I don't believe that this that the information that I provide in my videos is infactual or incorrect because I get this information from if I find the information on one source such as for an example the Charlie Project I always type that person's name in and go look for more information and sometimes there are discrepancies just like a story that I'm doing right now on several of the um, inf information sites they have this person listed as being 26 years old and on several other sites they have her listed as being 29 and I typically try to remember to point that out that there's a difference in the story um, I think what it is, and just this is just my personal thoughts on this subject, is that sometimes what's reported to the police and what is withheld from the police and withheld from the public by family members, by friends, by community members, sometimes it's rumor and hearsay and talk amongst each other. We all know how it is in small towns especially. Something happens to someone, someone always claims to know more about it. There's more to this. All I can say is that I do my best to bring as much information as I can on the stories that I cover. These are missing persons what little bit of information the family provides, what little bit of information their spouse or their children or their neighbors provides to the police and to the public is what I, fi is what I try to find and share. I can't find um, facts, so-called facts, in a story if that person is not sharing that publicly. 
because it's like I told this last person that reached out to me, I'm not an investigator. I don't go out into the community talking to people and searching for information on these stories. I find these sources online. I gather as much information about them as I can. And then I put together a video. And I try my best to be fair and factual. And if there are facts that are withheld, like I said before, I can't share something that I don't know about. I've told these people, you're, if you're wanting to share information, something that's not been included online, I will do a follow-up and I will make a video letting the public know that maybe something that I shared in my video is being disputed. Without facts, I can't say for sure that that happened. And almost all the time, maybe maybe not every single time, but many times, if you go through my videos and listen, I quote or I point out what forum I found the story on. I'll say this is from the Charlie Project or this is from Name Us or this is from Reddit. And just like I told the person that reached out to me, uh, recently here is a list because when I do my videos I save the original video before it's edited and then I save the edited version of the video and I have all that saved in a file in a database I can't repost the video once it's edited and posted to YouTube I can't add to that video but I can make a new video and do a follow-up and I have a few times I appreciate that these family members are going through a rough time having uh, a missing loved one out there in the community in the world not knowing whatever happened to them many years go by and they are still lost um, and my question is, are these family members that come to me and say your facts are wrong, are they continuing to push the police to continue to look into these missing cases? Some of these cases are old cold cases. Are they staying with it and pushing it? I don't know. I appreciate them for reaching out, taking the time to reach out to me. But all I ask is that if you're going to reach out to me and tell me you got this wrong, then come to me with that information that I got wrong. Don't just say you got your facts wrong. Say this part of the story that you told was infactual and here's the truth. And I'll do a follow-up and I'll say that according to the source or the family member or friend or whoever it might be, here is an update on their story. Um, I can't, like I said, I'm not an investigator. I'm not a police officer. I'm not going to go out and knock on doors to try to gather information on the stories. But I'm going to continue to make my videos, and I, I know that there will be some people who will disagree with something that I post. There, there always will be. Um... I've even had one or two people reach out to me asking me for money. Um, <laughs> one person told me that I need to stop making money off of these missing people. Well, I'm not monetized. I don't make any money on my YouTube channel. So it's a um, process to go through, but... Once again, I just wanted to make this little informative video to let people know um, I do my best to gather as many resources and information as I can on the stories. Some of them, like, I, like I've said this several times, I don't normally typically do videos or stories on the bigger name stories out there like uh, Lacey Peterson or Shanann Watts because they are covered from daylight to dark when their case first happens. They're in every dateline, 48 hours, every 
TV show, every news program, I look for stories, especially local Appalachian-based stories. I look for stories that maybe didn't get as much coverage. And maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe one of the reasons why some of these stories don't get as much coverage is because some people are unwilling to speak on it and are afraid or are um, maybe they just want to withhold information from the public. Maybe they have spoken to the police about this. So I'll just wrap this up by saying I try my best to make a factual video. I may get something wrong from time to time, and I very often do interject my own opinions and thoughts on the subject, on the story. I, I will say perhaps or maybe this is what happened, or could it be, you know, different from what is being told in this um, public source? So that's all I can do. I have my email address listed on the YouTube channel. If anyone wants to reach out to me with some more information. So far, no one's sent me any information. They send me an email or they will comment on the video saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, you got that wrong. They don't say, they don't point out one particular part that I got wrong. They just say, you know, maybe you should gather more information before you tell your story. Well, there are Facebook pages dedicated to some people who are missing, and some of those family members will provide in detail um, what happened to them or their opinion about what happened to them, and others kind of keep it hush-hush. If you want your family member found, if you want your family member's story to be told and their name to stay out there, um, you have to talk. You have to tell as much facts and information as you know. Thanks for watching.